What's up guys, we're back with another video today. The long anticipated Hot Toys Rescue Armor. I am super excited for this one because honestly, it's another iron armor that it, I, I like collecting those and it doesn't look like anything else that we have in the collection. So pretty stoked for that one. So Avengers Endgame, still waiting on so many figures from this uh, from the set, but uh, let's go ahead and get into this guys. We got the sweet Avengers Endgame logo right there. Check check out the box. It's like blue and nice little, like a metallic-y sheen going to it. You see like almost, it's almost like a foil finish, but not really. Uh, but there it is, Avengers Endgame logo. We got a rescue logo right there d32 mms 538 six scale then look at this die cast i mean just whew, good looking box right so on the side it does say rescue and you've got that like galaxy you know tripping thing going on right there almost from like guardians of the galaxy but it does say rescue right there on the side avengers logo uh there we've got a little arc reactor going on around the top and then on the bottom we've got uh you know all the whodunits and this is interesting nice little disney sticker i don't remember seeing that on any other boxes maybe that's something new or i've just missed it on the last ones uh, but yeah pretty cool box it does have the inner area which is empty because i wanted to save some time so i have this so we have a nice little rescue star foam i would love for all the figures to come in this kind of packaging by the way the plastic clamshell should be a thing of the past we unbox this thing right here take the top off boom we got some armor I have gone ahead and take all the plastic bits off because it's just, again, a nightmare to deal on camera. So check this out. This thing looks absolutely freaking beautiful. I mean, just the colors, the, the paint app is just crazy. And I can't wait to see what this thing will actually do. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we got going on. But just a first quick look on the figure. Look at this portrait, guys. Dude, come on. Come on. Tell me about that. That is freaking beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. We're going to take a close look at that in just a second. So we have the figure right here. We do get a couple of portraits or uh, we get the, you know, the helmeted you know, portrait deal. And then we get the light up helmet, which looks right here. I have gone ahead and put all the batteries in here, which took forever. They are a nightmare. And I really do not miss putting batteries into Iron Man figures. The Mark 50 was like the deal breaker for me. That, that thing right there was just just horrific the mark 50 and i didn't even bother on the mark 85 so we do have some hands we'll take a look at those and underneath there's another part of the clamshell on the bottom we have our flight stand decent size flight stand we got our base which looks right here if you want to see that avengers in game nice little a logo with the gloss and then the matte finish on the rest of this just like we saw with the uh, 85 and uh, nice little arc reactor going on there so rescue that's kind of cheap but you know, whatever it is, is what it is. Uh, we get this. I really wish they would have included the crotch grabber, the seat, if you will, on this stand, uh, this grabber. It would have been way better. They did that on the Mark 7, if I remember correctly. It had that one on there, and I really like that one. I don't, they should really just make that part of all of them. Uh, we get some pretty cool effects. We get this nice little repulsor blast effect. This reminds me of something out of freaking like Dragon Ball Z or something, right? Right in a uh, you know Kamehameha kind of section, boom, and uh, yeah, that that's a hundred percent what this is. This is a Kamehameha from Dragon Ball Z uh, for Iron Man armors, uh, but it looks amazing. We'll put, get that out in just a second. There is a switch out back plate, which we'll figure out how to do that in just a second, and then we've get this whole freaking section here, which is flimsy as hell. Having already messed with it, just a second, we'll get you out of here, and uh, yeah, this is incredibly flimsy but it looks cool right the paint apps are pretty sweet so um we're gonna we're gonna kind of get to this um unboxing rather quickly because honestly i want to get into the posing section of this video pretty pretty quick so i uh, hope you guys are okay with that this is the back portion of the accessories on this thing uh it does peg into the back if you want to do that we'll kind of mess around with that in a little bit in the posing section but look at the paint applications on this thing it is absolutely unfreaking believable we'll kind of zoom in and give you guys a little closer look but it is absolutely look at that it's it's like a it's, it's not it's like a purplish blue i don't know how this is coming across on camera it's definitely got some purple in it no doubt about it it's not like a deep royal blue it's more of a oh man I don't, i'm not sure what to call it but there's definitely some purplish blue going on there uh, and uh, I kind of dig it. I don't know if like the color grading for the uh, the film kind of changed up the colors a little bit, but this paint application 
is a purplish blue. And if anybody wants to come up with like an actual blue name for this, you can let me know down below. Uh, I have seen somebody who got one of these day one overseas. Uh, look, I got styrofoam. Uh, somebody got one of these day one overseas, actually put LEDs all in this thing and it looks flipping amazing. I can't imagine how much time that took, but it only took a couple days because uh, they had it done by, in uh, a couple days under the boxing, but they had LEDs throughout this whole thing. That was crazy. What would have been cool with that? Look at the backside of this thing. Look at the detail on the paint applications and that metallic paint. Dude, absolutely cool. This is flimsy as hell. This is, uh, I, I get why they did it. So it would be, you know, not obstructive to views and whatever, and it kind of look like it's floating. And I'm not sure how else they would have done this, but it's, um, yeah, I mean, I guess you're not really going to be doing that, but whatever. Uh, they are on hinges, so if you want to, if you're really careful, you can you can bend those uh, forward or aft. Um, but I think the the paint application, I like the turquoise, like for the arc the arc reactor section, uh, the repulsor section, I guess. Uh, the 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 turquoise color looks pretty nice with the gold and the silver and this purplish blue. I think they did a pretty cool job with that. So this has a um, a peg, let's see right there, uh, where you actually change out the back plate on the figure for this. And uh, there's a little slot right there, and that's where that kind of pegs into. And it just goes something like this. I'll kind of do this right here on camera. And it uh, should be pretty straightforward. Boom. So something like that. So it just literally pegs that, and that's how it goes on the back. Um, so uh, pretty, pretty simple. I don't think there's anything really super complicated about that part, but there we go. This is one of the back plates. You can see kind of the silver paint they've got going on with this thing. Pretty nice. It looks like any other Iron Man figure. If you've got Iron Man, you've seen the paint applications, same quality, same uh, flake in the in the paint as we've seen in other figures. Uh, dynamic sand, we've seen the hands. we got a couple fisted hands that are actually on the figure. And then we've got these guys, which uh, we have our normal articulated hands. And then we've got these, uh, I guess, repulsor hands, if you will that actually you need to attach to uh, the Dragon Ball Z Kamehameha uh, deal. So uh, we'll look at those in a second, but the paint applications, we'll kind of look at this one real quick. I mean, it's what you would expect from any other Iron Man figure. Uh, it's 100% that. Nice little detail on the uh, repulsor right there on that hand. And I think they did a good job. I don't think there's really any issues with this. Paint applications did fine. And, um, yeah, it, like I said, it's what you would expect from an Iron Man figure. If you own one, you know what I'm talking about. The articulated hands look good as well. Very nice. Typically, I use these for posing because I like to just have a little gestures with the hands or whatever. Um, so, But you want to be careful. If you're first time, it, this may be your first Iron Man figure. I don't know. Uh, but if you're messing around with these articulated fingers, be careful with them because you can snap them off and that's no good. So uh, you got those and get two fisted hands actually on the figure. So we got that going on. And then we have a helmeted portrait. Now, to be fair, this actually comes on the figure out of the box. I changed it uh, because I just wanted to. Um, but look at this paint application on this helmet. It is freaking awesome. Absolutely awesome. And uh, it would have been nice if there was a battle damage option. You guys know how much I love the battle damage pieces, uh, but it doesn't have one. Nice little vents I've got going on in the back of this thing. The silver and that little darker gunmetal gray going on there, all the way down to the gold that we're seeing here. And I do have the lights on, the batteries in here, so we'll kind of pop this part off. Uh, and there you go. And then, uh, boom, there we go. Fairly bright, at least for the first couple minutes of uh, having them on, and then they'll die, and that'll be the end of that. Uh, but they do have LEDs right here as well. LED there, LED there. And, uh, yeah, we'll pop uh, when we get them all on there. We'll... I'll show you what it looks like and we'll light it up. Uh, as much as I don't like doing that, I'm gonna do it for you guys. Pretty nice helmet. I kind of dig that very much. Uh, so we got that. Another face plate they actually put on the portrait uh, sculpt if you want and just pops right on with via magnets and you got some nice detail on the inside of the magnet, uh, inside of the mask. So that's fine as well. I, I probably will use this because I think the portrait's really good. And as much as people like to have like unhelmeted uh, portraits on Iron Man figures. I prefer them like this. I really do. I really prefer this. Um, I, I don't know something about the proportions look a little better to me and something about the, uh, just the, I don't know, the overall appeal of it on the shelf, I think looks better, uh, just like this. So I'm going to get some of this stuff out of the way. So you won't be super distracted by it. 
Uh, you go over there. You go over there. You go over there. There, you go over there. All right. So let's look at this portrait real quick, guys. We'll uh, we'll zoom in a little bit and uh, look at this thing. I think they did a fantastic job with this. The paint applications are beautiful. I think the eyes. I think the expression's fine. Is I mean, there's not really an expression. So does that count as an expression? Probably does. Um, but I think they absolutely nailed that. I don't have any issues with that. The hair color, I think, looks fine. I'd say it's probably like an 8 out of 10 on the portrait. It's not 10 out of 10. I think the maybe the expression is probably what's letting it go down a little bit. Or even a battle damage version would be amazing. Although some people would be like, yeah, I'd rather have a clean version. Um, but I think it looks quite good. That gunmetal gray carries over to this side. We got those vents going on the back. And look at this section down here with all the colors and that, that blue, purple, and then that gold. And uh, I think it looks absolutely beautiful. In the back, the paint applications continue. I mean, come on, look at this. Rescue number 49. Look at the like the, the holes going on there. Just everything about this. There's the, the rescue butt for those that are interested in that. And just look at all the detail, even down the back of the knees. I mean, they did a really, really good job with this thing. So I'm pretty stoked to have this in the collection. I like the arc reactor too. I think they did a pretty good job with that. Uh, as far as uh, like, you know, other paint applications that got going down, I'll show you like the, the leg here. Uh, nice gold paint going in here. This is a, I wouldn't say this is a high gloss. There is a gloss there, but it's not like a, oh man, what am I going to say? The, if you have the Mark 50, that one's like super nanotech, super high gloss. This is not. It doesn't look like it has a clear coat on it like the Mark 50 does, okay? Um, you can see it's almost a matte appearance to it, uh, even though it does have a little bit of shine. So that's it's like a mix. Uh, but nice little gunmetal gray going here with this detail. That's pretty nice. And then down the side on the calf, again, back here uh, with more LEDs going on in the back. And then down here on the feet, I'll rotate this around. Pretty nice, right? You can actually bend these down. Uh, I got some nice toe articulation down here. And uh, these flaps and whatnot open up so you can actually get them, you know, out of the way. Uh, I think they did a really, really good job with that. So uh, areas to note for batteries. So if you don't pull your hair out, kind of go crazy. Uh, obviously, in the other sculpt we've had on in the head, uh, the arc reactor to chest is actually back here. So if I pop this guy open right here, this flap, this flap, which is kind of crazy, right? And then these guys, and they, you want to be careful not to go crazy with these. Uh, you want to give them a nice careful tug. Uh, the, look at that. It's crazy, right? Come on. Looks amazing. Uh, but back here is this piece right here. These open up. There's more. Look at all those. That's crazy engineering. Look at that. Absolutely insane amount of flaps going on right there. Uh, but you've got to open up all of those to get to this panel right here, which if you remember, looks like this panel. And you literally pop this up. I get this going out of here. Oh, come on now. It came off pretty easy. There it goes. Came off right there. And then there's your battery compartment and your switch. So this is what I'm talking about with Nest One batteries. You've got to flip all these open, pull this off to get to that on-off switch to change to turn on the batteries. That is why I hate messing with these stupid batteries. But I'll do it for you guys. I've already done it. I already put them in there. Uh, but a nice little flap section going on there. I think they did a really good job. And noting um, these other ones here, let me pop this down. Noting this section right here, I think they did a really cool job with that. That's just nice detail that they didn't have to go into. And um, yeah, now there is definitely opportunity for breakage here. So be careful. You do not want this falling. Uh, these will snap in a heartbeat. These are flimsy. All right, these hinges. You want to be careful with these things. So if you want to close these back down, we're going to close that one, close that one, close these. And you'll notice that when you close these, you've got a gap. So you actually put them down and then you press in and then they close up to that just like this. You see that gap right there? And you literally press in and that's how they, they close up. So you got to do this in a sequence and boom, you've got a sleek, beautiful Iron Man Mark 40. Nine, I think that's freaking gorgeous. Uh, shoulder armor is pretty common to any other Iron Man. It's on a little hinge you can see right there. Uh, nothing that we haven't seen before. You can move that out of the way to do whatever you want with the shoulder. Uh, we are gonna have our normal Iron Man type joint. We got a nice little butterfly action here uh, that you can do pretty much whatever you want. Got a rotation at the shoulder, uh, rotation at the bicep. 
double bend on the elbow, which pops up just like the Mark 50 did. A little bicep section pops up. See that nice little gap in there. So that's pretty nice. Plenty of bend to do whatever we want to do. Uh, another area for the battery is going to be in the forearm. There's a forearm section right here. This pops off. Obviously, this pops off, so you can have the repulsors going on with the hands. You need that. And uh, they're, they're not too terribly difficult. That, they're okay. Um, not too bad. You get some nice detail on the arc reactor in the middle, and you get this nice little flap right here that you can articulate. So we can get that in the light. You can articulate this, depending on what you want to do. You can pop the torso down. Boom, you can open up the torso. And it says you can get like 45 degrees of bend out of this thing. So I think you got to be careful with it. So you don't, you know, rub the paint. Now I have scratched paint on my other Iron Man figures before because I, I like I like to pose my figures and I don't worry about that too much because they're not really going to leave the collection. But you want to be careful with that you might not want to scratch your paint, uh, but it will get your arm out of the way. It will articulate fairly well. Uh, and this section right here, if you want to bend that up, it actually snaps out of the way, as you can see right there, so you can get some more of that torso crunch, which I think is freaking amazing. If you want to go backwards, I mean, look how much gap is in there, right? That's pretty, pretty freaking cool as far as that. So whenever we want to flight pose or however we want to do this, we're going to have plenty of range of motion, close that back down, and you have a sleek Iron Man figure once again. Uh, so going down the legs, uh, these do, uh, these flaps open up, one right here, right there, and one right here. So you can open those flaps up so you can actually get some range of motion on the leg. Uh, the legs do have a drop down. So a couple of drop down clicks right there. You can see the difference in those. This one's all the way up, that one's all the way down. And obviously you got a thigh swivel here so you can do whatever you want, move that. Double bend on the knee, plenty of range of motion. And then we already looked at the feet. So normal ball joint uh, foot, if you will, down here. So we do have this flap right here, which will give us a little bit range of motion as well. And I think uh, a little toe, toe articulation as well. So this, I don't know. I, I'm appreciating it for its appearance and the colors and what it's gonna look like on the shelf with all the other figures. Um, it's pretty cool. This little flap right here allows you to do your little repulsor deal. There's one on each side. You can see the detail on that. Looks like they did a really good job there. Obviously one on the other side. So, you know, we've got that. We, well, in order to uh, use the Dragon Ball Z Kamehameha look, which look at the paint applications on this. This is insane. Absolutely insane. It really does look like something straight out of Dragon Ball Z, but it's, um, it's quite cool. So the way this works is you actually have to use the hands. I guess we'll call it the repulsor hands, not the articulated hands. You have to use these and grab the other one. Uh, and they slide into these bubbles and these gaps right here. And that's kind of how they, they go on the uh, on here. So we'll go ahead and throw those on. So here's how your hands go in there. They literally slide into those. Be careful with this, guys. Again, you drop this, you're going to break it, and you're going to have a bad day, and nobody wants that, right? Uh, and you don't want to get stabbed with those. They're actually quite sharp. They really are. So the hands go in there. You want to put those on and then put them on the actual figure. We'll get into that with the posing section, but that's how you do it. Uh, be careful, again, pressing this into the, the wrist joints. Uh, you do not want to snap those off, so take extreme caution uh, with that. But I think, I think what we got to do, guys, take one more look at this portrait. I think what we've got to do is go ahead and get to the posing section. So let's do it. All right, so let's play a game of how long till the batteries die, <laughs> because that took way too long to get all the panels off and everything off, but I did it. Again, I did it for you guys, I did it. So uh, we're gonna see what this looks like. I'll, I'll turn off the, uh, the key lights here and uh, give you an idea, but I wanted to give you an, an idea of what it lit up because it's just freaking gorgeous. I mean, at, look at the back of this thing, and I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not trying to over exaggerate this thing, but it is gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. And we're definitely gonna add some other characters into the posing section as you know how we do. But this one, I just wanted to be about the figure, how you might wanna display yours on the shelf. Uh, and like this, it's simple. You're not stressing any joints. You're not gonna have any issues with it. And even with the, uh, the, the acrylic plastic piece on the back holding up that part, I think it looks just fine. I think it looks just fine. Um, but you can see all these little bits and pieces of this thing. It is absolutely glorious. So before the batteries die, 
Let me go ahead and turn off the lights. There we go. And give you guys an idea of what's going on with uh, all the light up functions on here. So again, we'll see. We'll see if they actually turn on. Uh, I'm thinking the one section is, or, oh, this all covered up. Yeah, the back section is all covered up because I got the panels open or closed because of the uh, the attachment there. Um, but uh, anyways, we'll, see, we'll zoom in here. You got some going down the thigh there. You've got the torso, you've got the repulsors, and you've got the helmet. And it looks quite freaking cool, if I gotta say so myself. Just like any other Iron Man figure. Look at all those lights. I think they look pretty good. Now, if you get a fusion reactor or something to uh, have them on all the time, I think that's a great way to go. Uh, I don't own any of those just yet. I am definitely looking into adding some of those because obviously I have a lot of, uh, of Iron Man figures, but I just hate putting in the damn batteries. I just freaking hate those things. Uh, but uh, there is more lights to be uh, that are covered up in the back. I'm gonna turn this light back on, give you guys an idea, and we'll zoom in and get some close-up shots on this armor. So there's our 49 on the back. And you can see how the blue is just absolutely just beautiful. So the pose is rather simple. I've got the uh, attachment on the back, which you can see right there how it goes on. No problem at all. I did use the helmeted sculpt because I just thought it made sense and I wanted to show up the, the light up functions. But uh, there's that. And if I scroll down, you can see all the details in the gold and just how the lights bouncing off this uh, uh, die cast frame. Absolutely freaking gorgeous. I mean, seriously. So hope you guys like this first one. We're gonna do some more poses. We're gonna have some fun. Uh, I'm gonna spoil it for you. I am not gonna do the ground pound because everybody and their brother, when they get an Iron Man figure, they do a freaking ground pound. So I'm not gonna do that. I've, in fact, I've done a whole video on how to do it. I'll put a link for it up below. If you wanna know how to do it, I'll, I've got a video describing how to do it. Uh, but we're not gonna do that because it's just, uh, it's been done. So let's see what else we can do with this armor and uh, you'll see what we come up with. All right, so I gotta be completely honest. This attachment is absolutely worse than putting in 50 Iron Man batteries. It looks cool. No way in hell I would use this. It is an absolute nightmare to attach to these hands. So I'm just gonna throw that out there. I did this, I literally just wanted to throw this thing across the room. Uh, that's how frustrating I found this particular attachment. Uh, putting it on the hands, like the Kamehameha, complete nightmare. Not a big fan of that. It looks cool, but practicality, I will discuss in just a second. But I did break out the Mark 85 because you know, it made sense. So uh, here we go. We're going to look at the back of this thing. The Mark 85, again, I did a full review on that one. If you want to pick that one up, uh, definitely check that out. Um, but check out this rescue armor. It is it is cool that our joints are pretty, plenty strong enough to hold up this, uh, this effect. But the way they attach to the hand is a friction fit in between grooves into that effect. And it's, it's not a secure fit. It's a friction fit and it just doesn't... It's it's a it's a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass. So just take that for what it's worth. That's coming from me. Um, you may have a lot easier time with yours than I did. I, I there's no way in hell I would use that on display. Uh, guaranteed, it will fall out at some point and break, and you're just gonna be pissed off at the world. And uh, I don't want to be that guy. So I have left the batteries on on the Mark 49 just to see how long they'll last. I never did put them in my Mark 85 because honestly, I just they're. I just don't want to. Um, but we do have these light up features down here on the uh, back of the legs. We got them up on the torso and the eyes, and uh, they are definitely already starting to dim. Um, but they are these hands do friction fit in that uh, effect, and the effect is cool. I, ju I just don't. It's like the lightning effects with the uh, with the Star Wars figures. I just don't find them very appealing uh, from a display aspect. They feel more like a toy when you kind of add that stuff to it. Uh, so that's, it's just not for me. It might be for you. It's fine. Uh, but it's definitely not for me. So I'm going to have some fun with this thing um, and just see what we can come up with. So that's been my only real gripe with this figure so far has been that attachment. And uh, other than that, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So let's see what else we can come up with. All right, guys. So I've grabbed a whole bunch of uh, figures to throw on this display and uh, pardon the turntable if it gives up under the weight of all the uh, diecast figures because it looks freaking amazing. We've got Star Lord up front. We've got uh, oh yeah, I had I had to have this guy. We had to have Ant Man. How do you have an Avengers in game display and not have this amazing Paul Red portrait on display? Uh, so we've got our uh, War Machine Mark IV as we wait on our uh, Iron Patriot. 
uh, to throw a rocket up there. I just think awesome. We've got our Mark 85, which we looked at earlier. Rescue is flying along in the middle. And she looks amazing with the port. I'm probably going to display mine pretty similar to this. I, I like the portrait. I think I'm going to use that. We've got our in-game cap right there in the middle, looking all kinds of uh, patriotic and glorious and uh, ready to take on all of the bad people uh, in the galaxy. Nebula, of course, and Star-Lord. So um, I, I really quite like this. I really, really do. Uh, and I will take all these figures off of here so you can see Rescue towards the end of this video just by herself again. But uh, I wanted to give you an idea of what it would look like if you had all the figures on some kind of diorama display and you had uh, like two feet by two feet space. Look, they're going really fast now. Look at that. That's crazy. Uh, if you had like two feet by two feet space, which is about the size of this turntable, um, you know, you could fit a whole bunch of figures in there and it would look amazing, I think. And for those still waiting on in-game cap, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's quite fantastic. It really is. Oh, they're going to go the other way now. Uh, I told you these diecast figures are seriously heavy with uh, with 85 and uh, the war machine on one side. Uh, Mark VI should be here any day. So super excited to unbox that guy and add him up here. But he's not here yet. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove all these guys off of here. And we'll take a look at Rescue and give you just some uh, closing thoughts on this figure. All right. So as promised, we've got the Rescue up there by herself looking all kinds of amazing and what can I say, guys? It's a beautiful figure. I say, if you want one, I would check out where I got mine, Pop Collectibles. They've got them in stock right now if you don't feel like waiting on the states to get theirs in. Uh, discount code Patrol will save you some money, and it's actually cheaper than Sideshow Collectibles right now, uh, you know, before your shipping costs. So it's it's kind of it's kind of a good deal, honestly. As you can see, the batteries are already kind of dying, but that's to be expected. I knew that was going to happen. They've been on the entire time I've been recording. And um, so it's not terrible. It's just they're getting dimmer. But look at this is how I'm probably going to have mine displayed flying just like this. I mean, look at all these flaps and everything going on on the on the back. That is unfreaking. Uh, it, it, unfreaking real. It is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous as she uh, kind of swings around here. And the portrait, uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to be using the portrait on mine, guys. Uh, I think, you know, the helmet of the sculpt with the light up feature is great. But when they give you a portrait that's this freaking good, I think you got to use it. And it'll look good with all my like my Mark 7. I have the same like helmeted portrait on. Uh, I, I don't, I just, I just freaking like it. So check out Pop Collectibles, get yours today down below. If you want to get day one figures or even first batch or second batch, second batch is usually going to save a little bit of dough. Uh, check out Pop Collectibles Discount Code Patrol. Uh, that's where I got mine from. And he shipped it and it got here in like a few days. So uh, choose the faster shipping. That would be advice for you guys. Don't wait on that slow shipping. Just to save a few bucks. Get get the fast shipping and and enjoy your figures. Um, but I am super stoked for this. I'll throw some more photos up on Instagram. If you haven't already joined the Facebook group, what are you waiting on? Seriously, join the Facebook group. There's links to all that down below. I'll kind of zoom out here for you guys for this last couple seconds. Um, let me know your thoughts. Which pose did you like better? Are you going to be picking up this figure? And what, what, do you like the uh, the portrait? I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, I will tell you, just, just closing this out, that, that accessory that goes onto the hands, complete nightmare. That will go back in the box. I don't think I'll ever take it out again. Like I, They could have left that out. I get that they added it. It's fine, whatever. They could have left. I'll, I'll, I'll never use that again. Um, it was that much of a pain in the ass. But um, I'm pretty happy I had this. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. We got all kinds of day one content coming up, third party figures, license figure, all kinds of different things going on. And so, yeah, subscribe. As always, collect what you like. See you next time.